Hey, Algebra 2 and Honors Algebra 2 kids. Um, this is Ms. Mrs. Spellin, and I'm on page 36 of your student journals. We're going to talk about lesson 2.3. All right, so in this unit, we kind of, or in this lesson, we go ahead and take kind of um, a detour away from our three standard forms of equations, right? So we have like the standard form, we have the vertex form, and we have the intercept form. If that wasn't complicated enough, we're going to add in some more, right? So why not? We're going to talk about um, two new words, one called a focus and one called a directrix. Um, personally, I think it's easier to understand what these are by looking at a graph. So first, let me sketch a graph of a parabola. So we'll just kind of use the same old parent function. So you, everyone's kind of used to this whole idea of, okay, this is my vertex, right? We'll call it H and K. Um, well, there's another lovely little point called a focus. It is located on the interior of your parabola. So like, in other words, the parabola kind of wraps around it. And then there's also this line that is underneath, or depending on how your parabola is facing, could be right or left, but it is kind of opposite of where your per, of where your vertex is. So in this case, it's it's so if you know your axis symmetry is a vertical line, your directrix is a horizontal line, and vice versa. <clears throat> so we already know the axis of symmetry passes a vertical line that passes through your vertex, right? So then your directrix, I always just use dx as abbreviation, just because I'm lazy and don't want to write out the word directrix. So your directrix is a, um, a y equals, x equals, but I'll show you that in a minute, um, equation. So it's kind of the opposite of your axis of symmetry, if you will. What basically we're getting at here is there's these two other points that kind of have a, play a factor in your equation, <clears throat> where you can write an equation of a parabola. We call this distance. See how there's a distance between the vertex and the focus and the vertex and your directrix. The math gods of the world decided it was going to be called P. Don't really know why, but that's what it's called. So there's this distance P between your focus and your vertex and then your directrix and your vertex. It's the same distance. So in other words, these are all equally spaced apart. So if this was, if this was like at zero, zero, I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say this vertex was at zero, zero. This focus was at the point zero, 02. That makes your p value 2, right? That means your directrix is at y equals negative 2. They're all the same distance away from the vertex. So the focus is the same distance away from your vertex, as is your directrix. Again, I don't really need you to memorize vocab terms so much as to understand just what it is in the relationship of a parabola. So there's some other fun things. Um, we can also have a parabola that works up and down, right? That's the common one. Or there's a parabola that works sideways. So in other words, your parabola opens left and right. In this case, um, let's say I have a parabola that opens left or right. Um, same general idea. So here's my parabola. You would still have a focus that's inside your parabola, right? So it goes to the interior. And you would still have a directrix that is a line, so it's an equation, but this time your directrix would be a vertical line. And the reason why it's vertical is because remember your axis of it's always opposite of your axis of symmetry. Your axis of symmetry would be that horizontal line this time, and your vert and your directrix would have to be the vertical line. So again, if I gave you an example, the vertex at zero, zero, we'll call this V for vertex. Let's say this was at the point uh, five, zero, because we're on the x-axis then this would be x equals negative 5. Because again, it's the same distance. This distance here from the vertex to the focus is 5, and the distance from the vertex to the directrix is 5. Um, and so all that's that p-value. So it's always the same distance away from the vertex. Again, the only thing that changes by flipping your parabola is that instead of the focus, in, when the vertex is at 0, 0, instead of your focus being on the y-axis, it's now on the x. And instead of your directrix being a horizontal line, it's now a vertical line. All right, I'm going to give you a couple examples. And you can write these down or you can just watch. I encourage you to write them down just so you have them for future reference. Um, but you may need to pause the video to actually write down the words because I think that's the important part as well. So I'm going to say write an equation of the parabola. with a focus.
focused, I'm going to call it F, of 0, 4, and a directrix of y equals negative 4. So remember, oops, sorry, uh, the focus is a point, the directrix is a line. We're going to call this example numero uno. That's number one. Okay, so first and foremost, how do we know which way my, is my parabola facing up and down, right? Is it this one or is it this one? Because if you hadn't noticed, I had kind of skipped over this part because I'm going to get to it now. There are two kind of general equations, one for when your parabola is facing up and down, like your normal one. So y equals and then x squared, and there's this fancy 1 over 4p here in place of your a value. And then one for your equation facing left and right, and that basically swaps, it's called the inverse, it swaps your x and y. So you get x equals a y squared. Instead of y equals x squared, it's x equals y squared. Still quadratic, because there's the highest power of two. We're just kind of flip-flopping the x values. Um, so anyway, if you were to ask to write an equation, it might have to go ahead and start by graphing, right? So graph what you know. The focus is 0, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Put an F for focus. Directrix is a line y equals negative 4. That's a horizontal line at negative 4. So what this does, it gives me an idea of like where which equation I'm going to be dealing with. So if this is y equals negative 4, and this is the 0, 4, I know I'm going to have a parabola that opens up and down. And the reason I know this is because the parabola has to go around the focus. And it has to be kind of equal distance away from that um, away from that directrix line. So I know that my equation is going to be a like opening up and down. So I'm going to steal this equation from above. So it's y equals 1 fourth x, 1, 1, four, 1 over 4p times x squared. I'm not going to make you memorize these formulas. Um, so they provided for you will be allowed to use them on any kind of assessments, just FYI. Okay, so if you know anything we talked about before, like here's the focus, here's the directrix, the vertex is smack dab in the middle, which means between 4 and negative 4 is the point 0, 0, and that's your vertex. So if I were to sketch a graph of this, it would look like that. So the parabola wraps around the focus. This distance here and this distance here, called our p-value, is the same. Well, you need to know that value because that's what we're going to use to write our equation. So this p-value is a distance of 4. So y equals 1 over 4 times 4 is 1 16. So this is the equation of your line, of your parabola. And so it's just another way of kind of figuring out equations without having to, um, like without having like a specific, you know, like the A value, like without using like standard form, you know, intercept form and so forth. Let's do another one. All right. You may want to take a second to write this down and join me here in a minute. Okay, so it says identify the focus, the directrix, the axis symmetry, and then I give you an equation. Sketch a graph. So notice x equals y squared. So first of all, this is not in the correct form. And the reason I know it's not in the correct form is because you have those formulas on the previous page, um, and it's always use, it's, it's either solve for x or solve for y. The y is being squared here, so I know this is a parabola that's going to open left and right. So I know it's one of those ones, as opposed to opening up and down. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by negative 2, or in other words, multiply by negative 1 half. So I'm going to make this equation in the correct format. So I have now my equation kind of written in the correct format. What I want to do now is I know this is a parabola that opens left and right, because we just talked about that, right? The y is being squared. So the generic or general formula for an equation that opens left and right is x equals 1 over 4p y squared. So in order for us to figure out our focus and all that kind of good stuff, because we're going to sketch a graph, we need to know what that p-value is. Um, you can tell that the vertex is at 0, 0. And the reason why is because there is no h and k on this one. And we'll get into, I'll show you what one that looks like when, it's, um, when it does have an h and k, but this one definitely doesn't. There's nothing being added to the whole function. There's no change in the squared function. Like there's no um, y minus or plus a number being squared. So I know my vertex is at 0, 0, and I know this is going to open left or right. 
So I need to know, is the focus over here or over here? Is basically what I'm trying to get. So if I could figure out that p-value, then I know I could figure out the focus because it's that, that's the distance the focus is away from the vertex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say that um, this equation, or 1 over 4p, has to equal negative a half. So like this part of my equation right here has to equal this. Right? Those, that's the two parts that match up. So I'm going to say, well, in order for me to solve for p, I'm going to say this has to equal the negative 1 half. And then what value did p have to equal? Well, I'm going to cross multiply because I like to. And that's how I solve a proportion. So I get p to equal negative 1 half. What that means is that distance is going to be a half, negative 1 half. So when I write my focus... So the distance is a half. Um, I know that it's negative, which means it's going to open this direction. If it was positive, it opened to the right. And if it's negative, your parabola opens to the left. So my p-value is negative one-half, which means if this is my focus, it's going to be at the point negative one-half zero, because that p-distance is a half. And my directrix is going to be a vertical line at x equals one-half. So it asks you to find the focus. So I'm just going to label my stuff here, my directrix. And it asks you for the axis of symmetry. So remember, the axis of symmetry is your um, line that goes right through the vertex, the x value of your vertex. So it's right here. In this case, it would be the y value of your vertex because it's pointing the other direction. So y equals 0. And that would be your equation as well as kind of finding your pieces of your function. All right, what we're going to do next is we are going to kind of flip on to page 38. So if you would scoot on over to 38, you can read the other stuff if you want on here when you have a chance. And so on page 38, what we're going to look at is I'm going to do a couple examples with you, and then I'm going to save the rest for you to do on your own. It's nice of me, right? Um, all right, so I'm going to do one. Um, let's see here. I will do... Four is kind of hard. It's, it's just weird. So I'm going to go ahead and do number four, because I figured that would be a good one to maybe do as a whole class. And then I will do number seven. So I'm going to do two. If you want to take out a separate sheet of paper, it might be easier, because, again, they don't give you a whole lot of room on these papers, but that's okay. All right, so it says identify the focus, the directrix, the axis symmetry, and then sketch a graph. So for number four, I have negative 5x plus one-third y squared equals zero. So notice that the y is being squared. So this tells me that my parabola is opening left and right. The first thing I need to do is get this into the correct format, which in other words, solve for x. So I'm going to subtract um, one-third y squared from both sides. And then here's the fun part. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5, or in other words, multiply by negative 1 over 5. So multiply by negative 1 fifth. When I do that, I get 1 15th y squared. So this is then my equation that I'm going to graph. This is why I said this is a little bit weird, because the there's a lot of fractions in this one. All right, so if I'm going to graph this, I need the focus directrix. The axis of symmetry. Those are the three things I'm asked to find. So if um, I know this is going to be 0, 0 is my vertex, because we haven't really talked about any that's not. Um, and I know it's going to point left or right. And it's also going to, I know it's going to point to the right. And the reason I know it's pointing to the right is because my, um, the value right here is positive. And so if it's positive, it's facing to the right. If it's negative, it's facing to the left. So the next thing I did was solve, I need to figure out this p distance, because I know my focus is here and my directrix is over here. I can kind of already put it in there, I just don't know the scale. So I know that um, I know that in the equation, the general equation is 1 over 4py squared. And if I could solve for p again, then I would know that um, I could get that distance, right? So that's kind of what I'm getting at here. So I'm going to do... 1 15th equals 1 over 4p, kind of like I did on the last one. Whoops, it's off the page. I'm going to cross 
multiply. And I'm going to get 15 over 4. So again, not the prettiest of numbers, but, you know, it works. 15 fourths, if you're more of a decimal person, is 3.75. So that means this is my focus, right? So if this distance is 3.75, then this is the point 3.75 comma zero, or right as a fraction, call it 15 fourths. And this would be the line X equals, because it's vertical, negative 3.75. And so I'm just going to write my stuff over here. So 3.75 comma zero. My directrix is X equals 3.75. My x symmetry this time would be instead of an x equals a y equals, it's going to go right here, and it's going to be y equals 0. And that's your graph. All right, the left, next one we we're going to do, I said I was going to do number 7. I'm going to write it on, or I'm going to do it on here because it has the graph. So this time I'm giving you a graph, asking you to find some information. All right, so it gives you, again, it's pointing to the right. So that tells me that the equation I'm going to use is x equals 1 over 4p y squared. So that kind of gives me that to begin with. Um, I know that my directrix is x equals negative 7 twelfths. So what that tells me is that this distance, this p value, has to be 7 twelfths because it has to be the distance from the vertex, which is zero, to the directrix has to be um, that p-value. So that distance is 7 twelfths. So when I go and plug this into my equation, 1 over 4 times p, y squared, I get um, 1 over 7 thirds. Um, that should look a little weird to you. 1 divided by 7 thirds. Another way of writing that is basically taking the reciprocal. So I get x to equal 3 sevenths y squared. So all I asked to do here was to find the equation. Um, and again, that's all I did here was look at, basically look at what the information was given, plug it in, and solve for p. All right, that's it. Remember, I'm going to give you those equations if you are doing this um, or when you're doing this on your own, so that way you don't have to memorize those ones because you have enough to memorize and you should be set. Um, if you want, you can try the other problems on this page for extra practice just to make sure you're good to go. Come to class with any questions. All right, bye guys.